All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Sean Atkins, Chair of the East Point Planning and Zoning Commission. At this time, I'd like to call to order our regularly scheduled August meeting. Today is August 18th, 2022. Uh, Ms. Hoffman, would you please now roll call to establish a quorum? No problem. Commissioner Presley? Commissioner Fan? Commissioner Levitt? Present. Commissioner Mark Fields. Present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner McKnight. Present. Commissioner Bryant. Commissioner Joseph Fields. Present. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, See here. All right. Um, I see that there is nothing under old business, and so we'll move right on to new business. Um, our first case is two zero two. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. We have one item under old business. Okay, um, sorry, I don't see that. So can you tell me which item that is? That's going to be item number 12022U-001. The location is 2251 Silver Road. Hmm. Okay, I, um, oh, this looks like the work session agenda. Okay, I have pulled up the work session agenda. That's looks like was what was in my attachment um, from, that is old, Sean, that is old. Okay. There is a copy of the regular session presented now, if you can see it on the screen. Okay, thank you so very much. No okay, yes, um, one item under old business, that's 2022, you as an umbrella, that's 001-06, and 2022, you as in Victor, C as in Charles, dash 001-06. This is our only item under old business. The address is 2251 Sylvan Road. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Item in reference to item number one, case number 2022U-001-06, 2022VC-001-06. The applicant is South Central 50 Partners, Harold Buckley. The location is 2251 Sylvan Road. The applicant seeks a special use permit for the continuation of newly non-conforming warehouse development. Applicant also seeks a concurrent variance for parking, setback requirements, and outdoor storage. The case type is a special use permit with a concurrent variance. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen um, present this evening, we have held the public hearing on this agenda item. However, um, what I always like to afford those citizens attending the meetings once we've held the uh, public hearing and met our legal obligation, I would like to give them an opportunity for public comment. So um, I will ask uh, first if there is anything that um, the applicant or the applicant's representative would like to say, and then we will also get comments from the general public on this agenda item if there's opposition from the commissioners. So as Mr. Buckley, I see that you are present this evening. Is there anything that you would like to present this evening that is new or different that you would like for the commissioners to know? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Harold Buckley, tw uh, 2849 Paces Ferry Road in Atlanta. I'm here on behalf of the applicant South Central 50 partners. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, this is the second time this matter, I'm sorry. Just one second. Oh, I Mr. thought you were stopping me. Okay, no, just one second. Um, on my end, Mr. Buckley went out for a minute and that could be my connection. I am in the vineyard and I don't have the best connection. Ms. Alexander, you heard it all. Okay, excellent. So Ms. Alexander heard it all. Mr. Buckley, you may proceed. Okay, uh, as you mentioned, Mr. Chair, this is the second time this application is being presented to this body. Uh, the last time we came before you a month ago, uh, the uh, commission seems to be generally comfortable uh, with the, uh, the proposed continuation of the use, uh, but there were some concerns about the, uh, the, the appearance of the property. 
uh, with special mention being made that uh, New Birth, not uh, not New Birth, excuse me, Cascade United Methodist Church uh, across the street uh, impact, has done some significant impact. Church. Impact, impact. Church. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've got my churches all mixed up. I've got so many uh, applications dealing with churches these days. Um, but yes, Impact Church uh, was held up as a model in terms of landscaping and screening. Uh, and aesthetic quality from the street. So we were given a 30 day deferral to come up with uh, a landscaping plan uh, to present to this body uh, to uh, improve the, the, the appearance of the property since we are a gateway into the city of East Point. Uh, if I can share my screen, I would like to run through that landscape plan that we've come up with in response to the feedback we got last yes. time. Um, so I am Starting my share, uh, this is the site uh, here. Uh, Sylvan Road to the east, Millet Street to the north, Harvest Street to the west, and Oakley Drive to the south. Uh, the, the concern was that uh, when you come off Highway 166, uh, this is one of the first properties you see in the city of East Point. So, in response to the inquiry and the and the 30 day deferral, uh, we did come up with uh, a landscape plan. Uh, and what you see before you is showing the Sylvan Road frontage to the, the, the bottom of the page, uh, which is the main uh, traffic corridor past this site. Uh, Oakley is on the right side and um, Millet Street is on the left side of the screen. Uh, what we are showing is landscaping completely along the frontage uh, on, on Sylvan Road. We're also showing new landscaping uh, on the Oakley Drive side of the property and the uh, Millet Street side of the property. Uh, going to the next page, this is the as is current condition of the property, which sparked a lot of conversation at our last meeting. This is what we are proposing, which is consistent with the instruction that we got uh, to try to match the landscaping that we have across the street at Impact Church. Uh, the, the, you see the monument sign there that says Sylvan Studios back lot. Uh, when I was here the last time, uh, I explained that we had uh, signed a significant lease uh, with Netflix to occupy uh, 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 floor space in the existing building. Uh, my client is currently marketing the site to other similar entertainment uh, users, and they have gotten significant uh, uh, interest in that. Um, but in terms of the, the use, even though it will be changing from straight warehousing, which is what it is now, to sort of a hybrid, because you'll have studio production space, but you'll still have storage space in the buildings and outside on the property. But with this screening, uh, we are comfortable uh, that we have addressed uh, the, the, the feedback and the desires that were articulated by this body. Um, so basically that is what's new. Uh, and, and we are happy to uh, have these exhibits uh, uh, included as conditions to our zoning. Um, I'm sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button. We're also doing uh, a significant amount of work to the building itself, including uh, a new roof, painting the building. Uh, we are uh, uh, repaving and restriping the parking areas outside of the building. And uh, what you see here where my cursor is, that's the side of the property where the new landscaping will go uh, along the, the Sylvan Road frontage. So uh, that's what I have that's new, Mr. Chair, and uh, we would respectfully ask for your uh, this body's support in recommending approval. One last thing, I'm sorry, I know I said last thing, but I also wanted to remind the body that we have agreed to remove the barbed wire from the top of the existing fence and we are still committed to doing that even though uh, you will not uh, be able to see the fence uh, once the landscaping is installed okay 
Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Um, at this time, I am also willing to hear from any other proponents who would like to speak in favor or any other proponents who would have any comments um, regarding this application. We do have one attendee that raised their hand. Give me one okay. second. All right. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't have to be a proponent or an opponent. Anyone that will have public comment um, at this time. Hi, um, my name is Carrie Ziegler. I live, I live at 947 Parkside Terrace. Um, I live really, really close to this property, um, like not even a quarter of a mile away. Um, I, I, I kind of like the landscaping. You know, it's a lot better than what is there. Um, it does look kind of basic, though. Um, uh, but I do like the signage and I like how that looks and everything. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's really cool to have Netflix basically in our backyards. That's pretty cool. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, it looks a little, a little basic, but um, it, it is definitely an improvement from what it looks like now. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ziegler. Are there any other attendees here who would like to have comment? Any other attendees here who would like to have comment? Okay. Um, staff, would you please sound your recommendation for this agenda item? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Just to share my screen. So staff recommendation um, for 2022 using umbrella-001. 06 staff recommends approval with conditions and those conditions are number one repaint main warehouse structure number two resurface parking lot and parking striping number three provide tall evergreen trees on Silver road and 100 feet from Silver road on both oak lake drive and miller street and the final condition for the special use is to remove the barbed wire from the front yard um, for the uh, request for the variance 2022 visit Victor Citizen Charlie 001 06. Staff recommends approval for a request for the um, section 10 2154 off street parking or loading area construction maintenance to reduce minimum from two, um, minimum from 275 spaces parking to 175 spaces um, also staff recommends approval for section 10-2079 e2 development standards minimal front yard setbacks 40 feet reduce front yard setbacks from 40 feet to 25.4 on oakley drive and 20 and 27.4 feet on a uh, harvester drive um, staff recommends approval um, for sex i'm sorry denial for section 10-2150 Point eight a three warehouse and storage all outdoor storage must be in the rear of the principal structure and enclosed by oak lake fence no less than eight feet in height. Um, staff recommends denial for uh, section ten twenty seventy nine a five d automobile truck sales including retail parts sales and or tire store outdoor storage um, must be in the rear of the principal structure and enclosed by open fence or less than eight feet in height and lastly staff recommends denial for section 10-2079 a 20 a lumber hardware and other building materials establishments outdoor storage all outdoor storage must be in the rear of the principal structure and enclosed by open fence or no less than eight feet in height okay thank you mr singletary um, commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Miller. I make a motion to approve staff's recommendation on the special use permit and approve the concurrent variance with staff's conditions and recommendations. Okay, thank you so very much. Is there a second? Second. It's been, second. Moved, by, it's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett that this body recommends approval of application of the application as per um, sounded by staff um, for the special use permit and then the approvals for the concurrent variances and the denials of the concurrent variances um, of the concurrent variances as sounded by staff. 
comments, questions, or concerns of the uh, applicant or of staff commissioners? So, Mr. Chair, if, if, if I may, as the applicant's representative speak. Okay, Mr. Buckley, um, just give me just one second because our comment period um, is over. And so um, a commissioner would need to ask specifically a question. And so we may get to that because I'm sure I have some, okay? So oh, just, I apologize. I thought you were inviting me to speak. I, I'm no, sorry. Just one second. Um, okay, commissioners, um, any questions of staff or the applicant? Okay, hearing none is saying none. Um, if we can go back and pull up the conditions, please, as presented by staff. All right. Um, I'd like to go down to the concurrent variance portion um, of this. Let's go to um, the first variance. Uh, let's see here. I'm okay with from. 275 to 175, uh, the reduced setback. Okay, okay with that. All right, it's not the variance, it's the special use permit. Let's go to um, number three on the special use permit. Um, provide tall evergreen trees on Silver Road um, at and 100 feet from Silver Road on both Oakley Drive and Millage Street. Uh, Mr. Buckley, I do have a question from you. According to the plan that you just presented, um, how far back from the frontage on Silver, Sylvan Road is the applicant planning to um, install those evergreens? We're planning to, uh, to comply with the staff's recommended condition of 100 feet. Okay, and uh, how tall um, tall is relative. So, um, mm -hmm. staff, did you have in mind um, a height for that? Because I think we need to be prescriptive on that. Uh, Mr. Chair, we did not have um, a height in mind. We was thinking of being equivalent to the ever evergreen trees that's adjacent to the property that um, shielding, I think, the impact church. And we're not sure how tall are, are those evergreen trees. So we were thinking about something equivalent to that matter. Okay. So um, when we're doing these conditions, I, I think sometimes we, we will have to be a little more prescriptive. So what I would like to for this body to consider, particularly for number three, when we talk about the distance from Sylvan Road, both on the Oakley Drive side, as well as the Millet Street side, um, I would like for this particular condition to read a minimum of 100 feet. Um, because, and the reason that I say that is because the applicant may have decided to go further and I would not want to stop them from going further. The further they go, the better it all looks. So I don't think that they have to stop right at 100 feet, but this condition says 100 feet. So if 100 feet is our goal, I believe that the condition should read a minimum of 100 feet um, along both Oakley and Millage um, from Sylvan Road. Okay, I would like for the commission to consider that. Um, and I'm okay with these other things here. They will remove the barbed wire fencing and resurface parking lot, um, all of those things. Um, all right, and we'll prove that. Can you fix the spelling of barbed in uh, condition number four? Okay. Okay, yeah, barbed wire, okay. Okay, so um, Commissioner Miller, it is your motion. Commissioner Lovett, it is your second. Um, and so if we could just add that language and uh, Commissioner Miller, your um, motion stands and commissioner um, love it if your second stands that would be great if you would please sound that for the record my motion stands and my second stands okay with that added language is that correct with the added language okay yes motion okay. stand added language all right thank you 
Um, Mr. Buckley, is there something that um, you wanted to add to any of um, any of this, any comment that you had? Um, just one point, Mr. Chair, which is the uh, zoning, uh, the, the, the variance request that we have submitted for the outdoor storage uh, is made necessary by the truly unique uh, way that the property is developed and has been developed since that uh, building was put on there in the mid 50s. Uh, the zoning ordinance says that uh, that the uh, any outdoor storage has to be located to the rear of the building uh, and enclosed with an opaque fence. Um, the, the challenge is that our building literally sits right smack in the middle of the site and all of the open spaces around the perimeter. So if we put the uh, if, if, if we're putting outdoor storage in the location where it currently is, there's no way to comply because even if it is behind the building, it's still technically in a front yard. Um, so we would just respectfully ask for uh, an amendment to the motion if this body is so inclined to allow us to do that because it's literally impossible for us to comply with that uh, zoning requirement. Uh, we would be willing to uh, agree to uh, you know, making the fence opaque uh, all the way around if we could uh, get relief on the variance front uh, for for the, the the outdoor storage to be in the front yard, even though it is enclosed by a fence and behind the building. Uh, just again, because it's impossible to put it behind the building and still stay out of the front yard. That's just, that's the point I wanted to make. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Thank you for bringing that up because we did touch on this just a tad bit um, a couple of months ago. Um, I'm sure you would recall. Um, I discussed that um, in my estimation, Sylvan Road is the front, which is the address also of the property. So I do believe that it is important for us to, to clarify what this body would deem to be the backyard. So if you could, or if staff could, and I'm glad you brought that up because I have another point that I would like to make um, regarding this. If you or staff could bring up the aerial view of the site, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, sure, Mr. Chair, I'm doing that now. Okay. Here we go. All right. So um, if you could run your cursor along the Sylvan Road side. Okay. Um, so commissioners, are we all in agreement that Sylvan Road, which faces in front the gateway into the city would be the front um, of the property? Is that um, the under, our understanding um, that Sylvan Road, which is also the address of the property, is the front of the property? Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. I would agree with that. Okay. I agree as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. McKnight, Commissioner I, I agree as well, Ms. Chair. Okay. Yeah, rough Mr. time you've been here, but I, I agree. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Buckley, um, for these purposes, I would like to propose to the commission that Harvester Street, which to me is on the interior of all of this industrial activity, that Harvester Street um, would be the rear of the property. Um, it would not front or face um, this gateway here on Silver Road. And I think that at that point, if you wanted, if your client wanted to do any type of outdoor storage, that it is most appropriate to have that done on the harvester side. Now, on this harvester side, there is a structure that is almost in the center, but there are also a tremendous amount of parking, of, of surface lot for storage um, that I believe would be most appropriate for any outdoor storage and for it to be um, enclosed by an opaque fence. Can you run your cursor along the harvester side, harvester street side? Yes, okay. So um, my question to staff, staff, when you are creating the conditions, <clears throat> Was it your intention that Sylvan Road would be 
the front of the building and harvester would be the second, uh, would, would be the, the rear of the building or the lot. Yes, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buckley, it is the intention of the staff and it is also um, the intention of this body that Sylvan is the front of the property and Harvester is the rear. And having said that, your client would be able to um, conduct outdoor storage on this portion of the lot. Do you have any comments regarding that, Mr. Buckley? I appreciate that, Mr. Chair. Does that mean that the millage in the Oakley sides are the side of the property? for regulatory purposes? Millage and Oakley would be the sides of the property. And, okay. and, well, then. and, in, and in all fairness, Mr. Buckley, um, you should also want to know how far down Millage and how far down Oakley would constitute the rear of the property. Would that be something that would be of interest? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, I, I don't know um, in terms of distance, uh, the feet, the number of feet, but there is a structure on the Oakley side. If you look, it's sort of, it looks like it has a white roof and it's perpendicular to sort of the large warehouse space. Can you run yes, your Mr. cursor? Chair. No, not, no, sir. No, sir. That's too close to Sylvan. Let's go back some. That's that, that yep. there, yes. Okay. So in my estimation, if we can denote that that from that point to harvester would be deemed the rear of the property. Uh, well, Mr. Chair, I, we will accept whatever relief this body sees fit to provide. Um, historically, in making determinations of what's the front, the side, and the rear, usually the front is uh, the the area between the front property line and the front setback line, uh, because then that is is defined as the front yard. That's what you have to set aside and not build in. And then anything behind that setback line would be the sides and rear. Uh, but again. I just raise that for academic purposes. I, I, I certainly don't want to be argumentative with this body. I just was explaining, uh, you know, what what I have seen done before. But if we are agreeing that 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 this building uh, is the starting point of the rear, uh, then we would we would accept that. Okay. So. And, and I don't find that your comments are argumentative at all. I just want to make sure, I think it helps all parties to, cl to clearly understand. I would hate for someone from the city to come and tell you that you have a violation that you're outside of the rear yard. Um, and I would also want there to be some clear conditions so that your client will know in these portions, we're able to do outdoor storage. So with your definition of a rear yard, where would you define the rear yard, Mr. Buckley? Uh, I would need to look up the uh, the front setback very quickly, uh, since that's the the standard that I articulate articulated. So if you would just give me a moment to pull up uh, the code. Okay. While you're doing that, um, Mr. Singletary, do you have control of the screen and are you making um, the edits to the conditions as counted by the commission? Yes, sir. I would have um, made the spelling correction as well. I just wanted to clarify if the board did agree to um, add the minimum is 100 feet. Yes. Okay. So on, on, on both the Oakley and the, um, the millage sides. Um. All right, yes, sir, Mr. Child made the correction. I'm about to share my screen. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, let's see. Instead of and um, on say on Sylvan Road, a minimum of 100 feet. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Were you able to find what you were looking for? I I am still looking for it, Mr. Chair. I apologize. Okay. Um, it's a fairly large lot, um, Mr. Buckley. And actually, I thought that that demarcation was actually being a bit generous. Generous, um, but if you think that it is not, then um, please let us know. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I don't want to hold us up while I sit here and try to search the code okay. for that setback uh, definition, but. Uh, to offer up uh, uh, a, a line of demarcation, uh, may I offer up the 100 feet that we have agreed to screen from the uh, the view of Sylvan Road as the front yard, and then anything behind that would be the side or the rear? Well, yes, anything behind that 100 feet from Sylvan Road would be the side or the rear, but where does the side end and the rear begin? So are you asking so that are, you, would, are you asking for your clients to be able to store um, starting at 100 feet from Silver Road all the way to Harvester? Yes, Mr. Chair. Because that would include side and rear. Yes, yes. The only problem is the front. If if the, if 100 feet from Sylvan is the line of demarcation, then everything behind that would be either side yard or rear yard. Right. Um, and, under and, the definition that I offered. Right. But with that, you said either side yard or rear yard. And what staff has um, proposed is that outdoor storage would take place in the rear of the principal structure. They did not include the side. And I am in support of I not see. including the side. And so that's why I thought that structure, the demarcation, actually is probably more than 100 feet. So I'm trying to be generous um, because I think that it can still work because it's a very large site. And so um, I'm, I'm still trying to be generous and make sure that your client, Netflix, or whoever that is going to be, would have ample space to be able to store those things. But what I don't want is for there to be storage all along Oakley and all along Millage, because that is then in the side and not in the rear. That 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 is fair enough, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I won't continue to push back on that because my mother told me two things. Number one, while a, a closed mouth don't get fed, you know, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. So I'm not trying to overreach. Okay. All right. Well, I just um, the the the. Um, the denial portion and what staff has stated is that those things should happen in the rear. And I am in agreement, agreement with that. Um, having driven by this for such a long time and seeing all the storage along Sylvan, which is a part of the, um, the gateway to the city, I don't think that that's what we would want as, uh, and, and because the rear yard is so interior to all of that industrial activity, I think that it is better aesthetically I think it helps to improve the area. And I think that that structure that I just mentioned was fairly generous. I think it's actually over a hundred feet. Um, and I just don't want it all along the side yards. Um, what the staff has recommended is that it is in the rear yard. Well, let's make sure that we define what that is. Okay. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. So wherever we make that reference, Mr. Singletary, I think that we need to state that rear yard shall be defined as from the, I don't know what we call that structure, um, to the property line on Harvester. Um, so whatever that distance is, um, the perpendicular structure to the, um, uh, um, the structure perpendicular to the principal structure, from that point to the property line on Harvester. And just Mr. Chair, for clarification, are you referring to that L-shaped structure 
that um, Mr. Buckley have shown? Yeah, if you pull up or if Mr. Buckley pulls that up, the area view again. Okay, you see that structure that he is hovering his um, cursor over? Yes, sir. It's from that structure to the property line on Harvester. I'm most definitely make note of that and get the uh, measurements for that. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Miller, you're the maker of the motion. And Commissioner Lovett, you're the second of that. Um, you accept the language as a part of a friendly amendment? I accept the language as part of the friendly amendment. Commissioner okay. Lovett? Okay, great. Commissioner, the motion is on the floor to recommend approval with the concurrent variances as sounded by staff and the denials of the concurrent variances um, as sounded by staff and the language that has been added regarding the distance from Sylvan on Oakley and on Millage for the landscaping and also the, um, the demarcation for the rear yard. Um, Mr. Buckley, one last question. Sylvan Studios back lot, I saw that on the, I saw that monument sign on the southern part of the building. Would that be mirrored on the northern part as well? So that it's flanked on both sides, both um, on Sylvan at Oakley and Village. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question, but if this body wants two signs, we will give you two signs. Okay, we do. Um, because that is coming right off. One is coming right off of 166, just from downtown Atlanta. The other is coming from the airport. And I think it would be important for wayfinding for that to be flanked on both sides of the property. It's such a large piece of property. And so I think it would be important to have um, both of those as a part of the site plan. So um, okay. we will have two of those monument signs. And that, yes, commission, uh, Mr. Singletary. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. So just for clarification, would that be the fifth condition that the board's adopting uh, for it to have two monument signs on the north and south side of Civilian, uh, Civilian Road? I would like for it too. Commissioner Miller, are you amenable to that? Very much so. And Commissioner Lovett? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so th there you have it. Okay, so that is the motion. Commissioners on the floor with all of those things that we've added as conditions and the clarifications that we've added. The motion has been made by Commissioner Miller. The second has been made by Commissioner Lovett. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing on the ayes have it, motion carries. Mr. Buckley. Thank you so very much for working with this body and we're very appreciative with your client being amenable to working with staff, making sure that this is a win-win for all parties involved. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Okay, commissioners will now move on to new business. Uh, Ms. Taylor, would you please put up the agenda? Our first case under new business is 2022 Vias and Victor, Sears and Charles 001 05. Um, the applicant is Mr. Harold Buckley. The location is 874 Cleveland Avenue. Uh, staff, would you please sound the capture for this agenda item? In reference to new business, um, item number one, case number 2022 VC 001 05. The applicant is Harold Buckley. The location is 874 Cleveland Avenue. The applicant seeks a variance for parking in the Cleveland Overlay District. The case type is variance. Okay, thank you so very much. This agenda item, as well as um, I think a few others, will require a public hearing. And uh, I have been caught without, okay, I think I have my public hearing. Um, at this time, I'll read our rules for public hearings. Um, 
As we continue to meet virtually due to COVID-19 pandemic, we're utilizing this telemarketing platform to act upon planning and zoning cases as they come before this commission. As such, I am asking each participant other than the commissioners and staff to mute their devices. Once we get to parts of the agenda that require public input, those who have notified staff of their desire to speak will be recognized to speak. If you do not notify staff but desire to speak, please use the raise hand or chat function to be recognized. Public hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission shall be conducted in accordance with section 10 2219 of the Planning of East Point Zoning Code and Development Regulations as follows. Persons both favor and opposing the proposed case will be provided an opportunity to address the commission. The applicant for the zoning case or the applicant's designated representative, if any, will be entitled to speak first, followed by other speakers in favor of the proposal for a total of 15 minutes. Those who oppose the proposed zoning case will, be, will then be permitted to speak for a total of 15 minutes. By majority vote, the commission may increase the total time of speakers provided that each side is given the same amount of time. If there's more than one speaker for a side, the chair or the presiding officer may limit the time allotted to each individual speaker other than the zoning applicant. The zoning applicant may preserve a portion of his or her allotted time for rebuttal. Speakers must adhere to the rules of the quorum. Prior to speaking, each speaker shall identify him or herself and state his or her current address. Speakers shall speak only to the merits of the proponents of the proposed zoning ordinance under consideration, shall address remarks only to the commission, and shall refrain from making personal attacks on any other speaker. The presiding officer may refuse a speaker's right to continue if, after first being cautioned, the speaker continues to violate the rules of the quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the rules for public hearing. Commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Miller. I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett, that we open the public hearing. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Um, the public hearing is now open. Um, Mr. Buckley, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will share my screen um, to orient you all to the site. This is the site here at 874 Cleveland Avenue. And uh, uh, you can see that it's wet, uh, west of I-85 and near the corner of Sylvan and Cleveland Avenue. So uh, tonight on Sylvan Road all the time. Uh, you can see the building in the existing building in this uh, this street view image. <clears throat> and when we came before you the last time, uh, the planning commission expressed a uh, not a concern but questions uh, about landscaping. If you look at, can you still see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you look at the site plan, the question was about this parking here. Uh, we came uh, before you uh, a couple of months ago with other variances that we were requesting, including having more than one uh, uh, entrance and exit to the property, being able to have a drive through, also to have some relief from the building fenestration because of its uh, uh, function as a bank branch. Um, so, this area here was not included in the original variance application and during our first public hearing uh, it was noted that the cleveland overlay regulations do not allow parking between the building and the street uh, without a variance and so we uh, sub submitted that variance request so while the other three variances have already been approved this fourth one uh, is sort of the straggler that's coming up behind and all the rest um, in looking at this area and how it would be landscaped, uh, we went back to uh, to Wells Fargo uh, and asked them if they had definite plans for this property, and they said no, they don't. They haven't put the uh, you know they haven't looked at it in any great detail because they didn't know whether they were going to get the zoning or not, and they did not want to uh, uh, put you know that sort of detail into something that might not be approved. So what I did as an alternative was I reached out to their architect through the client and obtained two landscape plans for recent uh, Wells Fargo branches. This one is one that went in the city of Savannah. And what these plans have is uh, a plant schedule. You can see 
the species of plant that's going in. You can see the size of the plant that's going in on this one. If you look at the other uh, landscape plan that I have, very similarly, it has the drawing, but then it has this uh, detailed schedule of landscape materials, uh, which is representative of what Wells Fargo is doing at its new uh, uh, branch locations. So what I thought I might do is try to codify all of that into a set of conditions dealing with the uh, the landscaping between the street and that parking in front of the building. And what I did was basically say that that area, the unpaved area between those two access driveways will be planted with various materials. And those materials will be of comparable quality to the two landscape plans that I submitted to the, the, the planning staff. The second one was Dawsonville, by the way. The first one was Savannah. The second one was Dawsonville. Uh, and what I did was to say that the landscaping here will be of comparable quality to those. And then I just went and listed every single plant or tree or shrub that was listed on those uh, landscape plans and, say, and said that what we did had to be at least comparable to those. Then I also uh, put in a, a, another condition that said that the landscaping had to be installed or uh, Romopata had to submit a, a, a landscape installation guarantee to the city prior to the city's issuance of a certificate of occupancy, just as an insurance policy, uh, you know, that the landscaping that we are promising will actually be installed. Uh, I also included language that says that if anything that we plant dies, uh, it has to be replaced within 12 months. Uh, that what that 12 month period does is allows us to go through the various planting seasons because what you don't want to do is plant something out of season and then have it die too. Um, so that's what I have done relative to the landscaping and then relative to the sidewalk since pedestrianism is so important in the Cleveland Avenue overlay area is to put in a, a requirement that the developer uh, repairs and maintains the existing sidewalk along the front of the property, or they replace it with a new sidewalk that connects in with the existing sidewalks on either side of us. Um, so this is my, uh, this was our attempt to uh, be responsive to uh, the feedback that we got from the planning commission uh, uh, the last time we came before you. And we would ask for your recommendation of approval subject to these draft conditions. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Buckley, for that. Um, are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning application? Any other proponents? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning application? Any opponents here to speak against the zoning application? Ms. Ziegler, you have your hand raised. Is this for this case or was this for the last case? Uh, this is for um for this case with Wells Fargo. Okay, all right. Are you a proponent or an opponent? Um, a little mixture. Can I be? Is that, I don't know. Okay. Um, Go ahead and state your first and last name, your current address, and yet the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, my name is Carrie Ziegler. My um, I live at nine four seven Parkside Terrace. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much for investing in our city. Um, so the list that I saw that was just shown um, had some, and this is really picky, but there was some invasive species on there. Like holly, for example, is not the greatest to have around in our area. Um, the other thing is that um, I just want to make sure that um, because these are just kind of like designs that other Wells Fargo locations have that, um, that our location will look really nice and jazzy um, and bring people in and things like that because sometimes there's um, like Wells, not just like Wells Fargo, but really any place you know, like north of the city, it looks much different than it does kind of south of the city. So I just want to make sure that um, that that ours is looking all jazzy and spiffy and cool. Um, and um, so that that's all I had to say. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ziegler. Um, 
Is there anyone else here to speak against the zoning application or for the zoning application? All right, here and understand none, commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chair, motion to yes, close sir. the public hearing. Okay, is there a second? Second. So moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Miller that we close the public hearing. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Here and none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Staff recommendation due to the oddly shape of the parcel, staff recommends approval from the relief section 10 14031, retail mixed use G for parking. Number two, parking must be on to the side or the rear of the primary elevation, must not break the plane of the primary elevation. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singles here. Commissioners, we've heard from the applicant and we've heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept staff's recommendation. Okay. And a question for your motion, Commissioner Lovett. Would that also include the draft conditions as presented by the applicant? And also the draft con uh, conditions presented by the applicant. Thank you. Okay, sure thing, no worries. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, that this body um, approves the variance with the staff's recommendation and the draft conditions as stated by the applicant. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Mr. Buckley, the variance is approved. Thank you very much, all of you, and you have a great evening. Thank you, and thank you for your thoughtfulness that you put into those draft conditions that we have adopted. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to our next agenda item. I believe that's 2022 U as an umbrella dash 001 dash 06 with the concurrent variance 2022 V as in Victor C as in Charles dash 001 dash 07. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Yes, Mr. Chair, in reference to case number 2022U-001-06, 2-, I'm sorry, 2022VC-001-07, the applicant is Sydney and James Adams. The location is 1816 Linwood Avenue. The applicant seeks special use permit to build a low-wall habitable accessory structure. The applicant also seeks a concurrent variance for water and sewer in the structure. The case type is a special use with a concurrent variance. And this applicant actually requested for deferral and the information was sent to you all by Trajan. Yes, thank you, Ms. Solomon. And no we problem. did receive that information. Um, we will still continue to move forward with a public hearing as it has been advertised. We can take public comments um, as this comes back up at a subsequent meeting. Um, commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 2022 U as an umbrella dash 001 dash 06 with a concurrent variance of 2022 V as in Victor C as in Charles dash 001 dash 07. Motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. So moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Miller that we open the public hearing. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now open. Okay, the applicant, I believe, is not present this evening. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. The applicant is not present. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of the zoning application? Any other proponents? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning application? Any opponents? Hearing none and seeing none, commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner McKnight, that we close the public hearing. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, your recommendation. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Staff recommends to approve the applicant's request to defer their case for 30 days. All right, thank you. 
Um, commissioners, you've heard staff's recommendation to support the applicant's request to defer um, to our, rec our next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, at this time, I entertain a motion. Motion to Mr. defer. Mayor, I move that we that uh, the board defers case number two zero two two U dash zero zero one zero six two zero two two VC dash zero zero one dash zero seven. Okay. And Commissioner Lovett, is that to our regularly scheduled uh, our next regularly scheduled meeting? For the next thirty days, our regularly scheduled meeting. Thank you. Your sure thing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that this body defers case number 2022 U as an umbrella as 01 as 06 with the confirmed variant U as a Victor C as in Charles as 01 as 07 to our regularly scheduled, our next regularly scheduled meeting. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound aye. Here none, the ayes have it. We have deferred this case to our next regularly scheduled meeting. Our next agenda item is 2022 U as an umbrella, that's 001, that's 07, with concurrent variants 2022 U as in Victor, C as in Charles, that's 002 07. Applicant is Mallory Shirley. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? In reference to item number three, case number 2022 U 001 02, 2022 VC 002 07, the applicant is Mallory Shirley. The location is 3056 Cloverhurst Drive. The applicant seeks a special use permit to build a livable, habitable structure. The applicant also seeks a four concurrent variances for rear setback, left side setback, height of accessory structure, and obstructed parking spaces. The case site is special use and concurrent variance. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we vote with the public hearing. Correct. <laughs> we have not opened the public hearing. Commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to open the public hearing. That motion is to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. This has been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett that we open the public hearing. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have the public hearing is now open. Uh, Ms. Shirley, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I will share my screen. Give me one moment. All righty. Can everyone see my presentation? No. Uh, yeah. Can you see it now? No. I see it now. Thank you. No. Okay, great. Um, so again, the address is at 3056 Cloverhurst. Um, I am hoping to build um, an ADU on the property above a garage. Um, this is a little bit about me. Um, I am a mom of two, a three-year-old and a seven-month-old um, that I just had to give away. Um, and I have lived in Atlanta for over eight years and um, excited to start some cool projects. So um, first, I am seeking a use permit to build a habitable accessory structure on the property. Um, and I am seeking variances for the setbacks, height of the structure, and the parking. <clears throat> so in this slide, uh, you're looking at two images, one from the view of the left of the property um, as it exists right now, and uh, the second one from the right of the property, basically. Um, so as you can see, the lot is um, non-conforming. It's not as deep as a traditional um, R1A lot, which are typically 150 feet deep. Uh, my lot is only about 125 feet deep. Um, so moving on, just for your information, this is a plan uh, of the um, both levels of the ADU, the first level being uh, garage storage and washer and dryer, with the second level being the actual dwelling unit with two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a kitchen unit. That's another house. Uh, yeah, a, a tiny house, a big tiny house. Um, so um, here is a uh, front elevation 
or uh, really a side elevation, depending on how you look at it, um, of the property you can see here. Um, we have our two levels um, and the top of the roof. The height of the existing home um, is 16 feet and we're requesting a variance for the height uh, to make it taller than the existing property so that we can um, build the garage, the dwelling, um, and a roof with a 312 roof pitch on top to make a conditioned attic. So I'll explain a little bit about the conditioned attic. Um, so the purpose for building a conditioned attic space above the um, ADU is not just um, for storage or something like that. It's actually to increase the efficiency of the home. Sorry about that. Um, just had to yell at people in the background. Um, so the design of the home is inspired uh, by passive building standards, um, which is a building standard that was actually uh, started in Germany, probably in the 60s, um, where people were challenged to design homes that could be passively heated and cooled um, by sunlight and lack of sunlight based on their design. You're helping people around the That's world okay. communicate. So um, the purpose for the 312 pitch um, is to create a completely uh, insulated envelope in the home. So the entire structure will be insulated from the attic all the way down to under the uh, slab, actually. So uh, you can see here um, that I have a com considerable amount of insulation um, and sheathing in order to attain this. Um, I worked my hardest to get a design that would allow us to utilize the lowest pitch possible. Um, I am using um, wall sidewall insulation in the attic um, so that we don't have to utilize like a raised heel truss or other type of common design in high efficiency home buildings just to make that um, structure as short as possible. But other benefits of the conditioned attic are eliminating the hot and cold extremes. Um, so as you know, in traditional building, a lot of HVAC systems are placed in unconditioned attic spaces or crawl spaces where they have to work much harder, at least 10% harder uh, to condition that air that is extremely hot or extremely cold before sending it into the house. Um, in addition, to that, it increases the HVAC efficiency 30 to 50%. Um, I just built a similar structure a year and a half ago um, where I actually had to replace the HVAC units because they were too powerful and did not run often enough to actually condition and dehumidify the air um, because I built it very efficient. Um, Another benefit is installing undersized equipment, which means we are using less energy. It'll be an all electric build. Um, and I wanna be as light on the electric grid as possible. Um, also roofs in these insulated attic spaces last a lot longer because they're not subject to lots of condensation and mold. Um, and the HVAC systems actually last longer too because there's not condensation getting into the ductwork and damaging the system. So moving on, um, you can see uh, rendering. This is a scale view from Cloverhurst Drive of what you would be looking at from uh, the street through the existing structure and to the ADU. Um, as you can see, it's not disruptive. Um, all of the trees and foliage in the backyard um, are all taller than the structure would be. Um, the lines are pleasing and symmetrical and don't seem out of place. So the remaining variances that I am looking for include a side setback variance, rear setback variance, 
and uh, relief from the parking requirement. So if we go here to the side setback, um, that red square that you're looking at is just where you should be focused on in the site plan. This image to the left shows an enlarged portion of that. Um, as you can see, I am requesting a nine inch setback relief um, so that I can build the structure nine inches over the setback line, just so that I can meet um, building standard requirements. Um, the entrance to the garage door needs to be 18 inches um, from the side of the house um, so that someone can open a car door once they get into the garage. Um, so I just need a little bit of room there. Moving on to the next one, I'm also requesting uh, relief from the rear setback requirement um, so that I can move the setback to 10 feet. Um, and give enough space between the main structure of the home and the accessory dwelling unit, um, one, to provide for an extra um, unobstructed parking space, um, and two, to meet fire safety requirements um, and East Point building requirements so that the structure is um, more than six feet away from the main structure. The last request um, is for relief from the parking spaces requirement. So as you know, um, in R1A zoning category, uh, two unobstructed parking spaces are required. And if an applicant is building an accessory dwelling unit, they're required to add an additional uh, unobstructed parking space to the property. Um, I am hoping for relief from the requirement um, since I will be adding an additional uh, unobstructed parking space to the property that did not exist before um, and that there is really no other feasible place to put another parking space that would not impede with um, the look and feel of the home. And that is all for now. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so very much, Ms. Shirley, for that. Are there any other proponents here to speak? Mr. Chair, you're buffering. We did not copy. You're still buffering, Mr. Chair. Is anybody copying, Mr. Chair? No, we're all getting the same thing, Mr. Chair. We do apologize. Any other proponents here to speak in favor? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes. hear me we now, Mr. No, we're not no. copying any of that. Okay, no worries. What a may I take over in this instance? Please, sir. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. Shirley, thank you very much. Um, are there any other proponents to speak for this case? Any proponents to speak in favor of this case? Seeing none, are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning case? Vice Chair, there are three attendees and one ran, uh, hand raised on the attendee side. And so I would like to allow for them to speak if I can. Please do. Um, it appears that there's a Miss Carrie Ziegler who would like to speak and I'm going to move to unmute her at this time. Miss Ziegler. Hi, um, my name is Carrie Ziegler. I live at 947 Parkside Terrace. Um, and I guess I just have a more question because, um, you know, we live in an urban area and we're, we're, we are all really kind of packed tightly together as it is. And so my concern was when um, it looked like that the setback from the side was nine inches. Um, what's on the other side of that property? Is there like another house there or like what's on that other side where you're asking for that variance? Yes, so there is another house on the other Excuse side. Excuse me, this is not a question and answer series. No. We're just Hold on. either speaking for or against the case. 
That was my comment. Thank you, Ms. Nicklin. Um, there is one other uh, attendee, Carol Goodson. Would you uh, would you like to speak on behalf of this case for or against? No, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sickler, Ms. Goodson. Okay, see, commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to close a public hearing. Mr. Vice Chair, I motion to be closed the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner love it that we close the hearing for the case in question case number 2022 u is an umbrella dash 00107/2002vc-002/07 all in all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed say nay Seeing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, you may please now sound your recommendation. Yes, sir, Mr. Vice Chair. All right, for case 2022, U.S. an umbrella-001-07, staff recommends to approve, approve the applicant's request. For case 2022, Vizin Victor Citizen Tarly, dash 002 07, staff recommends to deny applicant's request. Staff do not see any hardship that would hinder the applicant from following the section 10 2130 habitable accessory structure. Okay, thank you, commissioners. You've heard from the applicant and you've heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I think Mr. Fields is speaking. Mr. Fields, you might want to take yourself off of mute. Joseph Fields. Yeah, I was mumbling out loud. Were you making a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I cannot make a motion. I don't understand the, um, I don't quite understand the recommendation. Um, is there two parts to this? From what it looks like, and from what I'm ascertaining from the uh, from staff's recommendation, they are recommending approval of the special use permit, but denial of the variances. Is that correct, Mr. Singletary? Yes, sir, that's correct. No. Well, my only problem with it, I know we I, I should be making a motion, but even the problem with the way it's presented, uh, if the variants are gonna be denied, then we should also deny the special use because without the, um, without the variance, the special use is moot in my mind. Maybe it's wrong. Um, it's, do I have audio at this time? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Commissioner Fields, Joseph Fields, um, before we get into any dialogue, there must be a motion on the floor and a second. Um, and then you would be able to present your case as to why you would feel that one should be denied um, if the other is denied. But we cannot have dialogue on anything regarding the case until there is a motion and a proper and a proper second, as per Robert rules. So we must have. So if, um, Commissioner Fields, Joseph, if you have a motion, um, you may sound that. And if we get a second to that, then we are able to deliberate on that motion. Thank you. Okay. In this case, then I would uh, recommend that we deny the application. Is there a second? Okay, there is no second, that motion fails. 
Is there another motion, commissioners? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the special use permit and approve the variances as well. Okay. Is I'll there second a second? That, I'll second that. I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that this body approves the special use permit and the concurrent variances. At this time, I'll take any comments, questions, or concerns. Okay. Hearing none, all in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Nay. Okay, I think I hear one nay. Is that correct, Commissioner Lovett? Yes. Okay, so with just one nay, the motion carries. This body recommends approval of the special use permit and the concurrent variances. Thank you so much for your presentation, Ms. Shirley. Thank you, commissioners. At this time, we'll move to any announcements. Staff, do you have any announcements that's good for the body? I do not. Okay, thank you, Director Smith. Um, as chair, I have no announcements. Um, commissioners, do you have any announcements? If there are none at this time, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fields. Joseph, I believe, is that correct? Correct. Okay, that we adjourn. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, staff, for um, all of your expertise this evening. Thank you to all of our presenters, and thank you also, commissioners, and, and those who have attended to give their input. At this time, the meeting is now adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Have a great night. Good night.